the questions. There's one thing I want you to bring up as we wrap up Gauss's law. It's about um, application of Gauss's law to figure out some things about conductors. And I thought one good example would actually be this Van de Graaff generator. I, I, let me just uh, you know, pop this open again to just to remind you what you have seen before. When you pop open this top of the Van de Graaff generator, then inside you see that it's nothing complicated. It's just, uh, it's just an empty metal sphere where um, there's some kind of uh, brush which is probably collecting the static electricity that's connected to the, the inside of the uh, Van de Graaff generator. So, uh, so this is the diagram of what you are seeing. So the sphere is simply a hollow sphere. And what it has is uh, it has this conveyor belt, which is literally going to carry charge from the bottom up here, just the mechanically, physically. It deposits it on the comb here. And this comb is hooked to the inside of this uh, sphere. And that's how charge goes from this bottom, the source, onto the sphere. So this is a conducting shell, um, conducting shell. Essentially, I have some sort of mechanism to bring up, uh, let's say, negative charges, some mechanism to bring up the charges and deposit it on the surface here. Once the charge gets there, what do you think happens to the charge? Collects there, stays there. Now, if, you know, that could happen, and in fact, that would happen with the insulators. Now, if that's what happened, this is what will eventually happen. As the charges come up on this conveyor belt, they will get repelled from this cone, and you won't get any more collecting there. Oh, so yeah. It yeah. The yeah. So the, with the Van de Graaff generator, what you see is that, so what limits the amount of charge on the Van de Graaff generator, what limits the amount of charge on this, it's not the electrostatic repulsion between the charge you are bringing up and the charge that's already here. What limits the amount of charge here is actually how much charge is leaking through the air. This is a really beat up, not very shiny, not very good Van de Graaff generator, so it won't be able to keep that much charge. But if you have a really you know, large Van de Graaff generator with a really smooth surface, you can keep a huge amount of charge, very large voltage of uh, electricity to the air. So, so, yeah, so a key part of this, once you place the charge here, it moves. So why would it move? Like, why wouldn't it stay there? What's, what's a special, so remember this is a conductor. What's a special about conductor? It allows charges to move. I guess when you have only one charge here, maybe it's difficult to, for you to think, why would that single charge move? Well, all right, let's say there are two electrons instead of one. What would these two electrons do? They will repel each other. They'll get away as far away from each other as possible. Um, let me think of one arrangement. One such arrangement would be this would go over here at this outer surface of the sphere, and this would go all the way over here at this outer surface of the sphere. Yeah. So as we collect more charges onto the body of the conductor, where do you see them gathering? Yeah, along the outer surface. And if this is a, a spherically uniform shell, then they would actually spread themselves out in a uniform way. That's the way they can you know, be spread out as far away from each other as possible. So, so that's uh, okay. So we can say this much intuitively that all this charge that's being brought up, they gather on the outer surface of the sphere. Now this is um, what I want to be able to mathematically prove. I want to be able to prove mathematically that on this inner surface of the sphere, on the inner surface of the shell, that there is no charge. Uh, this is another application of Gauss's law. Let's say you charged this up, so you don't have this uh, conveyor belt of charges anymore. Let's get rid of the conveyor belt of charge, because that will ruin my argument. Um, so what you have is a spherical shell, a spherical conducting shell on which you have placed some charge. 
and uh, somebody, so we have some intuition that they are repelling from each other, so they might all go to the outer surface of the conductor. And the question you, uh, one could ask is, is, the, is it really true that there's no charge at all on the inner surface? Well, um, to prove that mathematically, what I would do is I would apply Gauss's law. So um, the way I could do it is uh, I can define this Gaussian surface. This time I'm not defining this Gaussian surface because I want to find the electric field there. It's because I know the electric field there. I would define my Gaussian surface something like this. Something that lies within the conducting shell. So you know, how, no matter how thin the shell is, it's going to have some thickness. So I put my uh, sphere, Gaussian surface, so that it's within the some thickness of the shell. What do I know about the electric field at every point on the Gaussian surface? Chris? Uh, zero. zero. How do you know it's zero? It's inside the conductor. It's inside the conductor, yeah. We can't, we, uh, you know, reasoned out the rule last time, right? The electric field inside the conductor must be zero. So here, nothing's changed. Electric field inside the conductor is zero. What do you know about the, the so when you calculate the net flux, uh, E dot dA, what do you know about E dot dA now? That's equal to? Zero, because your electric field is zero. The integrand is zero, so it's a zero no matter what. what um, what's on the right-hand side of Gauss's law? Yeah. What's on the right-hand side is the charge enclosed over epsilon naught. So the fact that electric field inside of this um, Gaussian surface is zero, or the all flux through this Gaussian surface is zero, means that the charge enclosed inside is zero. So, the, so what, what this is proving mathematically is that there's no net charge on the inner surface of the conductor. So uh, then you, know, you can behave more like a mathematician and try to come up with, or you know, uh, devil's advocate, try to come up with a counterexample. Watch some kind of situation I can come up with that sort of um, agrees with everything I've seen so far. But there is some kind of charge on the inner surface. Maybe it could be positive charges on one side and negative charges on the other side. Can you think of any argument to, to disprove something like this? Like this can, that this cannot happen. Yes? It seems like the charges would meet if it's positive and negative together. They might. So, yeah, I want more uh, rigorous mathematical. So that's the physical argument. So if you are saying your intuition says that, all right, ah, now I'm done, there's no charge inside. That's a good intuition. That's not incorrect. I just want to give you some practice on using mathematical argument for proof. Symmetry, symmetry argument. So this is, uh, you know, using, being able to use a symmetry argument well, it's almost like a magic. Um, you just have to say the, a few right words and you've proven something that would have taken you hours to calculate out by hand. So here, um, you know, I made things easier. We started out with a spherical um, shell. So it has a rotational symmetry, right? So that means if I take this sphere, if I rotate it 180 degrees around, then nothing should change. But if I had supposed any kind of charge separation like this, then I would have changed something where you know, nothing else in the problem says there should be asymmetry like this. So using the symmetry operation, you can prove that charge distributions that look like this is not possible because that would break the symmetry of the setup. So once you say there cannot be charge separation within the inner conductor, then now you are done. There cannot be any charge inside, the, um, inside of that shell. And that's really why when you, when you bring in new charges, as you bring in new charges here, these negative charges are not opposed by anything. There's no negative charges on the inner surface. In fact, there's no electric field here at all. So as you deposit negative charge, it just goes on there freely, and then it almost immediately uh, gets pushed out to the outer surface. 
and the next one same thing as well. Question? Yeah. 